Hello and welcome to the Move Your Business Forward podcast. These talks are hosted by Rob Boll, founder of Evoke Management and CEO of International Leaders UK. We'll be talking with experts from both these companies about issues that affect SME companies today. Welcome to this episode of the Move Your Business Forward podcast. Um, today, we're going to be talking a little bit about businesses that struggle. So struggling business and business growth strategies to get those struggling businesses back on track, back from the brink. So that's what we're talking about today. Um, I'm joined um, and delighted to be joined by two of my Evoke colleagues, uh, Sam Hunter, who's one of our commercial directors, and Keith Donahue, who is one of our commercial and finance directors covering both hats. So thank you both for joining me today. Um, and let's let's jump straight into this. So struggling businesses, we, we're often coming across businesses, ambitious businesses that are struggling for, for various reasons. And we've got big challenges still with inflationary pressures, um, attracting good and retaining good staff, supply chain issues, and just the world is changing at a very fast pace and keeping up with that is a, is a challenge. Um, and we're seeing in lots of industries, cash getting squeezed all the way down the chain. So from top of the chain, top client all the way down, and that has pressure as well. But all of this, is businesses that have either slowed down or they're struggling to keep going. So I think the first thing to talk about is what what is a struggling business and what are the signs? And Sam, have you what's your what first comes to mind for you when you you think about a struggling business? I think from from um, a person's perspective, I think if you're you're constantly feeling under pressure, and you're constantly chasing your tail. That's that's a kind of gut instinct that mm. perhaps um, you're not on the right trajectory for your business. Um, maybe um, uh, a loss in passion, um, like the, the kind of fundamental emotions behind running your business. If they've changed to a negative, that's all you should go with your gut instinct and have, have a bit more of a deep dive into your business to see if you are still succeeding or perhaps fall, falling down a, um, a bit of a path. High staff turnover is always a good one. Um, it's a co- very, very costly. Um, you, when when you're um, focusing on on your business, um, you need to focus on profit rather than revenue. So I think if you're very revenue focused, that that's almost a big red flag without even having to go into too much depth. Um, and high staff turnover will, will be taking all of that profit out of the revenue that you're making. Um, not innov- not innovating enough. Not you know your products are old. You haven't re-innovated your products or your services. Your pricing strategy is still as it was even uh, two years ago. It's a yeah. very different market now. The world changes fast. If you're not keeping up with that change by changing and adapting your business constantly, you're probably beginning to fail in, in, in what you were succeeding in originally. Sam, that's great. There's, there's lots there already to, to talk about. <laughs> one, one of the things I like that you raised there is, is that not enjoying it. And I think we we as a team often talk about business has to be fun. If you don't enjoy what you're doing, you either need to change what you're doing or or potentially think about another another thing to be doing because it's got to be fun because it is hard work. Even the best people, um, best entrepreneurs, most successful people, they have their, their moments of it being hard, hard work. And I think you've got to still enjoy it to keep yourself motivated. And I think that's clearly a factor. You And this concept of just people going for turnover rather than profit, and ultimately, having a good, strong balance sheet, right? Having cash and a strong balance sheet to support what you're doing, so you're not you're not running around trying to chase your um your tail to pay payroll and pay everyone else. I think that's super key. Keith, what about for you? What 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 immediately springs to mind when you think about struggling business? Um, usually, uh, companies very um, very slow to come forward to ask for help um and i've found that um you know some key signs tend to be uh struggle we're well, not struggling to pay payroll but you know they're strapping for cash just before payroll is due or some of their obligatory payments to hmrc um, are paid on time um you know they've taken as much credit as they can from their creditors <clears throat> um and people aren't paying them on time. Um, and some of that payment on time can be to do with uh, service, which goes back to Sam's point about staff morale and, and staff turnover, because when you have a high staff turnover, you've got training that comes into it that, take, that saps all of the energy of, of the management <clears throat> and their time when 
that time can be better spent evolving the business and putting it back on track. So things get overlooked and then it snowballs, basically. Mm. Um, and yeah. all these things tend to come in at once, don't they? Yeah, and it goes back to the point, you just run off your feet, not enjoying it, just don't know where to yeah. turn next. No, agreed. Well, look, that, I think that's a good starting point. I guess the next is um, if any of these signs are there and you feel your business is on on that that wrong curve of the downward spiral rather than progressing steadily or, or going upwards in terms of growth and profit and generating cash, what are the strategies that you can put in place to, to help with that? So Sam, if I come back to you, I mean, you, you talked then about uh, you know, products, new products, new markets, the exciting world of innovation. I mean, what, what kind of things are you thinking there in terms of what you should be doing or could be doing as a business? Well, I think um, I think before you do any of that from a, a, a business perspective, one of the big things you need to look at first is you need to um, understand or accept your weaknesses. Mm. Um, so A, you need to be sure of what they are within the business and um, if you're covering them. And uh, you find that one of the most common causes of failure in a business, um, obviously, the, I think the top one is finan poor financial management or insufficient cash flow. Um, so you need to get on top of that. But, but also from a commercial perspective, um, are your products the right products? Are they the right fit? Um, is your current customer still your current customer? Are their needs and wants still what they were? Um, are your competitors still your competitors? Are you just following your competitors or or are you doing something new? Um, all of this does come under the kind of innovation heading and maybe looking to be more innovative within your offering, both uh, price, product, customer, and pricing, I don't need to be innovative with your pricing strategy, but looking at if you need to change or adapt your pricing strategy in accordance with all of these, these other commercial things. Um, Maybe um, looking at these in great detail uh, or in a lot more detail, what which what she did at, at the beginning when you were first kind of invested in your business will give you that focus to get back up and running, find that passion again, um, and also just feel, make you feel like you've got a lot more control of what you're probably feeling is slipping through your fingertips a little. Mm. Yeah, no, understood. I, I think all of those things um, are positive things to be thinking about and looking at, and, and I think picking up what Keith said some of these things get overlooked is just looking out the front the front kind of window of the business and under, and seeing what's ahead and what to pick up on Keith for you any, any, any particular things for you Keith around business growth strategies um I think well you know, once the red flag is is being flying um I've been looking at their cash flow and their budget forecasting um and because very often uh, companies have payments going out for services which they believe they need. Um, but, you know, if they took themselves back to when they started the business, um, when they only took these costs out when they knew they could afford them, rather than it being something they've always had and strip everything down, <clears throat> they need to regularly reforecast that budget on a monthly basis in combination with the cash flow and specifically go through every single line item and see mm. is it absolutely necessary do we actually need this do we do we need it right now for the next three months for the next six months or can we do without it and i think you'll find that when they add up those lines that are not absolutely essential there are there are wants but they're not essential um they can they can cut down quite uh, dramatically then of course they've got to be looking at their manpower um is the manpower sufficient in, in the various areas of the business? Do they have enough salespeople compared to enough marketing people? Because, you know, marketing has to be done, but if you've not got the salespeople doing it after the marketing has been done, then, then you're going to be deficient there. So you've yeah. got to upkeep your sales and make sure your products and pricing is right. At the same time, you've got to, you've got to cut down on your cost as well. So um, primarily, if they've got um, problems with HMRC, you know they need speaking to yeah uh, if they if they're owed money to if they owe money to creditors they need speaking to just just so that um, these people feel comfortable that the business is now being looked after and <clears throat> it's it's being turned around basically yeah once you've classified those creditors 
and you can relieve some of the calls you might be getting. Then you've got to look onto the sales side with your um, contracts, with your um, terms of trade, what your what your credit terms are, can they be shortened, you know, that that kind of thing. And I think that's the immediate thing I would look at when I go to a company. Yeah. But it, it, what you've said, and as similar as you, Sam, as well, it's, it's just having a keep having that fresh look at things and thinking, right, what are we missing? What have we not done? What have we not looked at? And I think particularly around things you're spending money on, you know, things change and something that was brilliant before and used every day, yeah, might have now been replaced by something else or less of the teams using that bit of software or or whatever it is you've got. And it's going, we've just got to cut back and changing mindset from what does the business actually need? And if if we need it, why do we need it? And what kind of return is it giving us? It's different different way of looking at these things, isn't it? For sure. Um, I think to, in, to enable you to, from a commercial perspective, to enable you to innovate and change your commercial activities, exactly what Keith said, um, you need to go, the, the kind of due diligence you have to do is go right back to managing your budget, mm. um, right back to monitoring all your expenses and understanding your your cash flows, even right down to what your forecasts are. Are they correct? Um, and all these things need to be understood and analysed to allow you to then go on to innovate and make the right decisions when you're changing your product offerings or service offering Um and all, all the other things that, that you could easily put into play. But I I would just say don't 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 go and do that without doing what Keith told you. Yeah. <laughs> Manage that cash flow and, and go into your budget and budgeting in a lot more detail. Because that you might find just a few tweaks there, or what what will increase your profit and enable you to to manage it better. No, great. It's interesting bringing up budgets because I, I would, you would love love to think everyone's got a budget, but I know they haven't. Okay, so there's there's firstly is get a budget if you haven't got one, but I think also some people are so stuck on their budgeting process that it's like well it's not in budget, and I think what I often think is look in the fast paced world we're in today, you might have a budget, you might have a budget for the year ahead, you might be coming to the end of your budget period now and trying to do next year's it's all based on assumptions of budget and things change. And I think part of this process of getting a business back to growth or back to that, that growing um, scenario is assessing, actually, we might not have got the budget right. And actually there might be things we weren't aware of before that we now need to be spending money on. And that might have to replace other things, or it's that commercial decision. We have to invest in this to get to that growth. And yes, it's not in budget, but this thing didn't exist six months ago. So, of course, it wasn't going to be in our planning process. The other important thing with budgets are that if you started your business today and your budgeted income was 20,000 and then your budgeted expenses were 15, and let's say part of that 15 was a marketing spend of five grand. And then in month one, you actually had 20,000 income. So they say, okay, well, we can then spend that five grand on marketing because it's in the budget. No. But the next month, the budgeted income was 20, but you only made 10. So what's going to happen in month three is you'd spent the money on the marketing, not really knowing the forecast for the next three months. So you have to be very careful when you start budgeting. And those frilly bits that, you know, help the business to grow, perhaps defer some of those decisions so that you've got the profit before you start it, rather than you've got it coming in because it should be. You know, it's really sort of did you in the last month so that you can afford uh, that next month's spend to cover your own heads. But if it goes adding costs next month, um, and, and this something uh, Keith, you're 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 cutting out a bit there. I'm hoping it might get that on the recording. Um, but um, we might need to just edit the, the section of that. We, I think we've got the grit, the, the the cusp of what you're saying about budgets, but we might just need to edit this back for Ollie's knowledge. Um, so, well, yeah, let's just pick the pick, pick that up and re-go. So, yeah, but so bu- budgets is one thing, and linking budgets to marketing, I think, is a real skill, and what a lot of companies 
struggle with. One one thing I like the concept of, and I don't know, Sam, if you've come across this, is the concept of an unlimited marketing budget. So actually understanding what's my cost of acquiring a client and how quickly can I get that repaid to myself and go again. Because once you've got that concept, you can constantly spend on marketing knowing this goes out the door, I'm going to get a client and that client's going to pay for its marketing, its cost of acquiring that business within within a certain period of time. I think that is not an easy thing to get to, but if you're constantly thinking about how do we achieve that, um, it's a slightly different decision-making process as to what marketing you're happy to spend on and and why. Any, any thoughts around that kind of budget and specifically around marketing, which Keith was talking about? Um, well, and uh, that comes back down to um, measurements and mm. measuring whatever you're doing or whatever you're implementing. Um, you use the budget as part of your KPIs or measurements towards your marketing. Um, but you, you have to be able to justify the costs on what you choose to do, even if it is an unlimited um, marketing cost, but you need to be able to justify it by measuring it and proving that it's working or not working. Um, and I think that's that's quite important. And e even to making the decision as whether or not you need to give it more time, because marketing can take a lot longer than you think just for fruition for it to start um, paying off for you. And um, whether or not you need to differentiate what you're doing to to, to give it more more impact, more power. Um, yeah. So, so yes, but I, 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 the unlimited market is fine as long as you're measuring yeah. and bringing it back into your cash flow management and your decision making from a, from a financial perspective. I think I think the key here as well is to is to maybe look at organising your business. Um, you know how you organize it look at your time you know wasted wasted team meetings can cost a lot of money <laughs> there's lots of elements that you can go in and look at um that will affect your cash flow and, and your your profit at, in the end um so yeah I, I would say all the things we're talking about identify the root of the problem um organize it and then start making the decisions as how you're going to to bring yourself out of, of the funk that you're in I think I think uh, your your point on decisions is is super important. I think making informed decisions and not being afraid to make them quickly as well. If you if you you your feeling is based on the data, the metrics isn't working, or this is working really well. Let's let's do more of it. But then then keeping track on the fact that it's still working consistently is is really important. Those that ability to make informed decisions based on facts and and knowing it's going to make an impact on the business is super super important. What, one thing, I'm going slightly off on a tangent here, but one thing I have noticed with businesses that I work with is there's a lot of them, and I, I don't know why, uh, maybe because they don't feel comfortable, um, don't tend to share a lot of their um, uh, financial management with their whole team. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't see why not. Most of it is is, is common knowledge. It's if, if We always, one of the things that, that we like to introduce is like a, like a, a, a daily daily dose of daily management mm. very brief glimpse report but so that everybody's on the same page everybody understands the changes and the measurements mm. everybody understands where where the business is going i think it, any any decisions or understanding should always be shared from the top down and, and the down up if that makes yep. sense and, and updated um so that everyone feels like they're working from the same page mm -hmm. yeah 100 percent. that makes a lot of sense Keith, any, anything to add on that in terms of... Uh... Yeah, I'd like to say um, the transparency of reporting is paramount when things are almost at the brink. Um, mm. Very often in certainly larger companies, <clears throat> you've got a finance department, you know, perhaps um, the finance manager reporting, um, you've got a sales director that's reporting. They do need that daily huddle, actually. Um, so that the owner is fully aware of what's going on before some of these red flags appeared. I'm pretty sure from my experience that some of these um, uh, proprietors of businesses weren't aware or as aware as they should have been so as early on as they should have been. Mm. Um, and I think once um, you're at a point where, OK, you're, you're now sorting the business out, you're looking at forecasting, you do need to have very, very regular meetings and good communication just between the key management staff 
so that they they're all on the same page um, and problems are shared actually yep so that they can yeah they're resolved um, as as a group decision and quick decisions as you say yeah i think part of that sharing commercial- and discussing is key isn't it sharing and discussing those things sorry yeah. sam i was just going to say and from a commercial perspective this this is this is a massive driver of innovation yeah. Um, you know, when you're looking for new things and new ideas and new concepts that might work, this just doing this on its own is, is a massive um, change and move in the right direction. Yeah. So, <laughs> we, so we shared a few things there, and this is only meant to be a, a brief intro to this. So just to wrap up, um, let anyone listening to this that, that feels their business might be in a struggling position or they're not enjoying it, harder work, or they're running out of cash, um, hopefully they haven't left it too late and there's no cash, but they, they, they're on the they're on the curve of we need to do something. Top top tip. So what, what would be your one bit of advice, Sam, for anyone in that position listening to this? My 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 immediate top tip would be the focus on profit, not revenue. Um, personal top tip: be resilient, be fearless, and adapt. Cool. Good word, Sam. Keith, okay, top tip. Um... Don't be shy in coming forward. It doesn't matter if you're failing and you've always been successful. Um, business is an ongoing and accumulative thing. Um, it, it, you're actually taking a very positive step by saying, I need help. Yeah. No, agreed. Agreed. Uh, well, look, thank you both for joining that. I think it's been a good discussion. Hopefully some useful points for, for people listening to this. So thank you for joining me on this and uh, look forward to talking to you again on another another episode so thank you thanks for listening if you'd like more information about the topics discussed in this podcast then you can find us on our website at moveyourbusinessforward.com